This is a HeadGum Podcast. Here's a question. What is care slash of? Care of is a monthly subscription vitamin service made from effective quality ingredients, personally tailored for your exact needs. So I got an email and they were like, take this quiz. So I took a quiz, super easy, super fun, super chill, lots of pictures, truly kept me engaged, bright colors, good for me. And it literally designed the vitamins that I should be taking. And truly I read through it and I was like, this is right. I should be taking these vitamins. And there's tons of benefits to vitamins. So even if you try to maintain a healthy diet, guess what? It can be hard to get all those nutrients your body needs for long-term health. Vitamins also fill the important gaps that your body is missing from your diet. And get this, 90%. It's a lot of people. That's almost all the people. They fall short of the FDA recommended guidelines for at least one vitamin or nutrient. Also, the recommendations are built on clinical research with traditional medicine, with input from doctors and nutritionists. It includes individually wrapped packets with your specific vitamins and supplements for easy grab and go. Because you can't be shaking stuff out of bottles being like, what's this and the other thing? Nope, these are just wrapped up for you. And guess what? It costs about 20% less uh, when compared to similar brands at drugstores and local health food stores. So for 25% off your first month of personalized Care of Vitamins, visit careof.com and enter the promo code DATEME for 25%. I'm saying it again because you might have missed it, but you get 25 to 5% of your first month of personalized vitamins via Care of. Visit Take care of dot com. The promo code is date me. What a treat. You'll be swallowing big old vitamins in no time. Bye bye. It's a podcast where we're exploring how I'm still single, even though I'm on Tinder, and even though I'm pretty easy. You don't even have to buy me dinner. (laughs) My guest today is a dear friend. He's very, very funny. He is Greek. And on stage once, I said, what are you, some kind of Latino? (laughs) Which is so awful on so many levels. I love it. But we were hosting a diversity showcase. Mm Mm-hmm. My friend, Mono, and I cannot say your last name. Never say it. Agapian. I, Agapian. Yeah. I don't think okay. I have, I think I've said your last name out loud, maybe a total of two times. Sure. That being one time, and yeah. then some other time after you've said it to me. Don't sweat Agapian. it. Agapian. Agapian. Don't sweat it. Because I look at it, there's an A, there's a P, there's a G, there's mm-hmm. another A, there's an I, there's an A. There and might an be an R. I an don't R, know. a Q, a Z. So I'll look at it and be like, back up, Agapian. <laughs> it's it could go a few ways because you could start up high you could <laughs> you start at the beginning high you could start at the be- end uh, low uh, oh god mana is so Hi. funny and i'm so happy you're here you're so sweet i love you oh, i love you so you. much i love you um Okay, yeah. so let's Where just get start? right into it. Yeah. You are you are dating someone. I am. Very sweet boy who's just adorable, funny, cute, uh, wonderful. I feel like I tricked him. I <laughs> have a joke that he's like a two-year-long prostitute, <laughs> and I'm going to get a bill any day now. And it's going to be too much money. Too much? Oh, no. You'll have um, to sell all your things. But I'm so lucky. He's very cool. Um, and... I will say I met him after one of the worst nights of my life at a gay bar. Yes. So, okay, before we talk about yeah. how you met him. Sure. Uh, did you ever online date? Have you ever done yes, Tinder, Grinder? Yes, girl. <laughs> yes, girl. I what did you do? used to document it. I used to do Grinder a lot. Yes, yes, yes. And I did a whole thing where I documented it on Grindr Instagram. Grinder Diaries. It's still up there. I haven't updated it because you can't have Grinder when you right. have a happy boyfriend. <laughs> Um, but it's still up there, Grinder Diary. I just documented the insane conversation 
conversations I would have on the app. Mm -hmm. I did Grindr the most. Um, I think that's the one I did the most. There was like a couple other gay ones, like Jacked and or uh, uh, Adam for Adam. Scruff. Oh, yeah, Scruff. Uh, growler. Bears for bear. Oh, Growler was for bears. Yeah, Growler's a little too bearish, mm -hmm. even for me. Bear culture's really intense. It's wild. It's like, wild. And if you're not big enough, they'll be like, you're not a real bear. Yeah. I do like them. I like really, I have nothing but love and respect for that community because it's one of the few gay communities where I feel very comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and whether it's me projecting it or it's a reality, most gay vibes make mm -hmm. me feel like a weird little middle schooler. Sure, because it feels, I don't know, this might, this is truly just me inferring sure. and projecting because I'm not a gay man. Sure. It feels like sure, a though? lot of, mm, I don't know. <laughs> I've been tucking this whole time. Uh, I do feel like a lot of gay culture is a hierarchy that like stems from maybe high school, where like yeah. you maybe were you wanted to be the popular girl, but you yeah. weren't. You were you know yeah. a nice little gay man that maybe didn't have the status that you wanted. Yeah. So you grow up. Now you're hot. You work out all the time, mm -hmm. and now you get to hold the status. Mm -hmm. So you get to just like make this strange hierarchy yeah and all shade all tea mm -hmm. there is still a lot of um racism in the gay community a, a lot yeah i mean you kind of see it on drag race like you'll yes. have black queens where people will talk so meanly and poorly about mm -hmm. them but i'm like well what is what is the difference between this black queen and this yeah. white queen yeah. who are evenly leveled yeah and like, because whiteness is still the major pop culture experience. Yes. So everyone is comparing pop culture against whiteness because whiteness mm -hmm. is the default. So everything else kind of has a backseat. Yes. Um, and it's true in the gay community because like the gay men put on a pedestal are white. Mm -hmm. They just are. And white little twinks, white Adonis's. Uh -huh. And everything else is compared against that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and like, even if you are a Arabic hunk, it's like, wow, how did you do that? Uh -huh. You know what? He's hot because he reminds me of, of this white uh -huh. hunk. It's and wild. It's interesting in the gay community, everything is like sectioned mm -hmm. like there's rice queens or like oh, uh like a you like chocolate men or mm -hmm. like whatever like everything is sectioned off it's so weird it's very interesting it's like gay men trying to emulate the way that like straightness the, is yeah the way that like uh heterosexuals have gender have gendered roles? and yeah. boxed everybody in it's weird yeah it's so very unnecessary. very strange it's very strange it's everyone just trying and i mean honestly it, it it's bigger than we can even measure oh but yeah it's definitely like trying to find some form of validation in a in a thing that mm -hmm. is generally seen as other or weird or bad mm -hmm. and like just like for years me even growing up i was like well i'm gay but i'm not so gay like i used to be like i'm gay but i'll never do drag uh -huh. because i was trying to seek a little bit of validation mm -hmm. from majority culture yeah that's like uh, my friend mateo talks about his gay voice and he's uh -huh. like i tried to hide my gay voice but i can't it's just the way my voice comes yeah. out and it's such an interesting thing to like, because it, it's it's very interesting that like a gay man can hide. You can yeah. You can be in a closet, but like for being ethnic or being a different anything yeah. other than white. Yeah. Mostly you can't hide, and if you can hide, it's just called white passing. They yes. won't even say that you're like yeah. that you are hiding it. It's like oh, I'm just passing. It's still there, but I'm passing. Yeah. It's a. Uh, Race and gender identity and sexuality is such an interesting, complex thing when, like, it shouldn't be. No, it shouldn't be. You should be able to just, like, wake up and go, mm, I want to wear heels and have a beard and yeah. do whatever I want. Yeah. And even, like, because there was also a part of me, tell me if you ever had this thing, mm -hmm. when you were younger and you were so obsessed with your ethnic identity that you let it obstruct your true self. I guess what I'll say is when I was younger, I was like, I'm Greek. I am so Greek. Baklava. I was like, so pushing it, pushing it so hard. Like, uh -huh. Nia Vardalis. Nah. I was just pushing it so hard because, like, I don't know, like, I needed people to see me as special. Yes. So I couldn't just be like, yeah, I am that thing and it's interesting. I, I had to push it. 
didn't have to push my blackness, mm-hmm. uh, specifically because I grew up in a white suburb where black, I was not, I like had never been called the N word until I left Jersey. Wow. I went to Mississippi and that's the first time uh, I heard okay. it being Ugh. like thrown at me directly. And I was like, okay, Ugh. I want to go back up North. <laughs> they seem a little bit more civilized, Jesus. but they're not, it's just as bad. But, uh, I was an other, but I was a cool other. Mm-hmm. So like Eminem was popular, like hip hop mm-hmm. was popular. Mm-hmm. FUBU was a thing that everybody wanted. And like Tommy Hilfiger, like mm-hmm. hip hop was had such a huge uh, pull on mm-hmm. like white suburbs, or at least the white right. suburb that I grew up in. So like nobody ever made fun of me to my face. Uh, people liked me, and I don't know if it was just because I was black, but I was also very loud. Mm-hmm. And I would lean into blackness that I didn't really know, like, like getting my, like I, I didn't grow up with my mom having her nails like acrylic nails, like right. long nails or anything. Right. But I had seen other black women with it and I was like, I want that. Yeah. I want to wear weaves. Yeah. That's what I, I, I want to be like a little hood. Like I would try to be a little bit more hood than I was sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but that's normal. But yeah, that is normal trying to like do something. Well, uh, you, you, you're familiar with the whole code switching My mother thing. code switched. Yeah. So my mom, her name was Lily to like white people. And then mm-hmm. to my black family, her name was Bonnie because mm-hmm. that was just her nickname. And a lot of black kids will have nicknames that are completely, you'll be like, I'm Sammy, but everyone calls me Boo Boo. And you're like, <laughs> where did Boo Boo come from? Well, yeah. one time I fell down and I said, uh oh, Boo Boo. And it stuck. I love that. Yeah. And I don't know why my mom, oh, my mom's name is Bonnie because my, grandmother's friend name was Bonnie and then like she Mm -hmm. was on her it was like whatever but my mom would speak to my white friend's parents differently than she spoke to like any black person I've ever met and Uh I'd be like huh yeah so not only is her name different to white people she speaks differently Mm -hmm. to them and then my mom since we grew up in such a white place whenever she saw another black person on the street she would nod at them Mm -hmm. so I just thought my mother knew every black person but it was just like I acknowledge that you're here mm-hmm. i acknowledge that you are here and it's just like an understanding that's just yeah. like we're alone in this hello yeah so now whenever i see a black person <laughs> and a los feliz or los feliz however you want to say yes it, i like smile and they always smile back because it's yes. like we're alone here <laughs> yes i love that i love it's I mean, interesting it's an interesting thing i still do it i do it with the uh, brownish people mm-hmm. when everyone has a different ish name i'm like oh don't worry i got your back mm-hmm. i won't let anyone come for you in your name yep uh i and got your back anish wild that White, I won't say all white people, but some white people just can't wrap their heads around a different name. Oh my God, it's truly the most un- Yes, it's crazy. Unbelievable, I I tell them to their face. I literally just said it today. I was like, check your cultural relativity. Mm -hmm. I've learned your words, Uh Greg, Barry, (laughs) Annie. That's just as weird to me. Uh-huh. Like, but I, we're living in your world, or yes. so you think. And it's also like crazy. Like Sashir has like people cannot say Sashir's name, uh-huh. but then it's like you can say like Oslakovich. Yeah, like, you could say all these like crazy like yeah. Russian or Jewish names. Totally. But it's like you refuse to learn like a Zahid or like yeah. a Z- Hezekiah or something like yeah. that. It's wild. Uzo Anywho, was talking about this, right? Uzo, Uzo Aduba. Oh yes, because she has a name that I'm yeah. sure has been butchered a hundred times. A million times, but she fucking kept her name. She's Uzo. I do love that she I kept her it. name, Uzo Aduba. And like, now I kind of wish that I had yeah. a more interesting name. Cause I yeah. was specifically, my sister and I were named Catherine and Nicole. We do not have nicknames. My mother said that we could use slang, but never like on the phone or like never mm-hmm. if you're going for a job interview or something. My mother literally raised us to be white on paper. Yeah. And then when you like got to a job interview, they could go, oh, you're Nicole. Yeah. And then you like wow them with your manners and you wow yeah. them with the way you speak. And it's like, so I was literally raised in defense or like offensive. Yeah. Or def- I don't know. I was raised like life is a game and you just got to be white to win. Totally. It. My mom did that too. Because I grew up around crazy. foreign crazy people. Like <laughs> people who had jumped off of a boat. <laughs> 
<laughs> who <laughs> who just barely made it made a living here by selling gyros and hummus mm -hmm. and like around her people around her mm -hmm. crazy foreign friends just being like let's kill the goat <laughs> and yes let's stay up till 3 a.m drinking coffee and like craziness and then when we're at school being like Yes. 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 Sure. yes. sure. I would love that. Thank you. PTA meeting. Yeah. That was where my mom really couldn't even fake it. She was too foreign for the PTA. That's so funny. Uh, she got anyway. Anyway. Okay. I back feel like to side dating. Barring. Yes. That was back a to very dating. Big sidebar. Big sidebar. Um. But grindering, dating. Yes. Yes, I've been around all of it. I used to. Uh, I used to be a hoe. Oh. I was filth, and uh, yeah, until I just, I just truly got over it. Mm -hmm. The thrill of so, popping a weird dick in my mouth went away. <laughs> did you? I mean, it's fading for me. I'm yeah. like, I just want one dick that I know. Yes. That's not weird. One pretty that, like, dick. Yes, one beautiful dick. Oh. That like when his pants drop, I go, that's my dick. Yeah. I get to ride that and nobody else got. And you to. know the smell and you like the yes, smell. You're like. Yes. And I'm like, oh, these balls are good. Yeah. Because I've sucked dicks and I'm like, this tastes like poison. <laughs> <laughs> I always talk about it like a dick that looks like it's been chewed on. Yes, I've seen I those. I hate that. Where you're like, ugh. ugh. I once, I didn't date him. We fucked a couple times. This hot Australian named Tom. Yum. And the first time I sucked his dick, I was like, his dick is dirty. Ew. This is a dirty dick. And I was like, it's be I was like, I guess he like was out all day. Because later he was like, yeah, I was out all day. And I was like, mm -hmm. I mean... You couldn't take a baby wife to that thing? Something. You couldn't fucking for anybody. And then, like, I rewarded bad behavior and kept sleeping with him. Fuck. Did you ever do the thing like, let's shower? No. The second time it was great. I was like, okay, okay you washed your body. You fucking washed your stupid The dick. third time I went to his place oh. and I was like, you have a blanket nailed to your wall. This is not art. Yeah. This no, is no, not no. okay. That's never been acceptable. No. I hate when people do that. It's, I just want a grown up. Yeah. I know. It's a grown I, man with nice, nice furniture mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. just nice things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is the lottery, though. It is. I, I, because I, I don't have any. Because I've, you know, I'm in a relationship now, but there is no, there's nothing I did to deserve it. Mm -hmm. no, well, you're a wonderful person. Well, I it love you. Thank funny you. Funny and beautiful Ugh. and caring. I love you. And nice. I Thanks. think you deserve it. Thank but wait, you. We all, we do both deserve it. Thank you. I'm yeah. just waiting for my. Quatten. So when you were hoeing it up mm -hmm. on Grinder and mm -hmm. Tinder and whatever, did you make a point to be like, I'm going to stop doing this? Um, yeah, I think so. I think it's just like you just hit a wall, right? Or like you have bad experiences. It's like it's rarely all that fun, honestly. I'll tell you something. Oh. LA is filled with beautiful people. But they're not on Tinder. And they're no. not online dating. No, have you heard of this like new one? What? Raya? Fuck, Raya won't what? let me on. <laughs> oh, is this I think I heard this from like Drew or something. Raya is yes. I'm sure Drew is on it, but <sighs> Raya is a, I don't a dating yet. app uh -huh. for famous people or like people who work in the industry how the hell can you not be on it i think i'm too fat and black get and out of here i don't well it's, i don't mean it in like a woe is me type of way i yeah. just mean if you're gonna curate a look mm -hmm. i'm not the look and i mm -hmm. know i'm not the look sure and i'm i i not happily i just like i humbly accept sure that i'm not the norm and that sure. like Sure, you would like want, you know, Dane Cook to match with an Instagram model. Like sure. Dane Cook's not gonna swipe right on me. I also don't know if Dane Cook is on this. <laughs> <laughs> He's just the person I could think of He's who just... was awful enough to be like, Yeah, yeah, yeah I just wanna date an Instagram model. Oh yeah, I wanna I fucking hate Dane Cook. Oh, fuck and I'll him. go on the record. Go to on the say record, that. fuck him. He sucks. I'll tell you a quick little anecdote about yes. Dane Cook. So I was at the comedy store. I was trying to do uh trying to tape a late night set. Uh -huh. Like a five minute fucking set mm -hmm. i was supposed to go up before dane the the host comes and he goes hey nicole uh we're gonna put you after dane i said how long is dane doing dane is doing 20 minutes i said is this a real 20 or dane 20 because oh. i've been there when he's blown through that light and it's done like 40 minutes he goes no it's gonna be 20 but then in his set he hits like 30 minutes 
And I was like, how much longer is he doing? And he was like, I'm so sorry. The light guy told him he could do however much he wanted. And I said, so he's going to do, what, an hour? And I'm going to come out and do my little five minutes? Mm -hmm. That doesn't, that's not how comedy works. Mm -hmm. They've adjusted to this man's material for an hour. It's going to be hard, a hard reset for five fucking minutes. Yeah. So then he was like, I'm so sorry. And I was like, well, can someone light him? So then they let him. And then he did an hour and 20 minutes. That's insane. He never apologized. He never said anything to the effect of, I respect your time. Mm-hmm. And that was disrespectful. Mm-hmm. He, I literally watched the host go out and then try to get the crowd back up to be like, there's one more person. She's not going to do that much time. Like apologizing for me before I got on stage. And I watched Dane Cook walk out the back of the comedy store Kiss his fucking girlfriend with fake tits, which there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. You're just mad. She's just pretty and I hate her. (laughs) And he like literally (laughs) kicked the door open with his foot and rode her off into the night. And I was like, you've got to be kidding. That was like the most Dane Cook thing you could have done. Rode her? Yeah, she was like in front of him. And he was just like, "Uh, I can't. It's a podcast. You'll never know what I'm doing. He was like behind her, like holding her and like wiggled out. Oh, okay. Just like, here we go, you prop. It was one of the best sets I had, though, because I was so angry. You did great. They loved it. Yeah, but then I didn't record it. Shit. (laughs) Shit. Okay, well, a couple things I need to say. Yes. He sucks. Yes. I one time hooked up with a guy who had birds in his house. Yeah. And I had to leave. I lied and I was like, I have to get something from my car. And I just left. That is very funny. What kind of birds? I don't know. They were like in covered cages. And he was like, it's okay. It's okay. Don't mind them. And they just smelled like bird shit. And it was insane. disgusting. And thirdly, yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I don't feel like I'm a part of the poster child of what is ideal. But that's cool. Because you will find like someone beautiful. Different. Yeah. You will find someone I... beautiful and cool who is just like, I like that. There is some there is somebody who is already obsessed mm-hmm. with you. I like so. I mean, obviously, you're a star and you're Ugh, I'm not beautiful a star. and you you bring you have this energy that brings people to you. So Thank you. You shouldn't be worried. I growing up, I like I didn't want to be white. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to look like everybody else. Which sounds like, it's like, I wanted to be white. I just wanted to look the way I looked. Me too. But like have people look at me and see what they wanted to see. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, 100%. Yeah, I never, even now, I know that I look different than other people. Yeah. But I've really just like leaned into it. I like looking different. I walk around with like four pairs of eyelashes on. I wear, I contour my face. I add hair on almost every yeah. day. I've just been like, this is what I like to look. I am wearing a bedazzled shirt right now in leopard yeah. print. I look well, in borderline insane, but like I love <laughs> no. it. No, that's just, I'm a full believer in your, what you put on is your drag. Yes. So that doesn't mean you're, you are a drag queen. It just no. means this is how you express yourself. And that's fucking no, cool. I'm not a drag queen because I'm not a man. <laughs> Correction. Not a man. But I do know what you mean. And I feel very affected by it because I grew up feeling like my body should be one thing. And yes. a lot of like what is considered hot is, mm-hmm. is a very limited white. It's such a very <laughs> weird limited thing. It's like if you're white. Tall, have abs, full head of hair. Yeah. That is what's sexy for a man. Yeah. For a woman, you have long hair, you got big old titties, tiny waist, a little bit of hips. Now butts are huge. People love Finally, butts. Finally, but it, like very short time ago. Oh, God, my mother growing up would be like, tuck your butt. You oh don't want to look like a, you don't want to look like a question mark, like an upside down question mark. Oh my God. Yep. And it now, was, now it's just like everyone wants heaven. a butt. And then lips. My mom taught me how to draw the liner on my lips to make them look smaller. Are like, you serious? Yes, we spent a lot of time trying to look like uh, what Eurocentric or whatever. Yeah, I oh, hate wait. that. Mono, okay, before please. Before we keep talking, yes, we have to take a commercial break. <gasps> okay. All right, we'll be back. And we're back. What a <laughs> dream. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi, what a dream Hi. of a break. Oh, that was a good break. We stretched. Yes, we, we kissed. did. We kissed a little bit. I wanted to ex- continue yelling about racism. Yes, I mean, it is wild. And my friend Emily, I mean, I had heard it, but Emily brought it to my attention that mm. uh, black women and Asian men are the lowest. Uh-huh. Nobody wants them. Mm-hmm. 
which is insane. My boyfriend is Asian and he's, he's smoking so hot. He's so hot. He's so hot. I'm terrified of he's dating so a man who's cute. this hot. I You guys look so great thank together. Thank you. I love him, but literally the first thought I had walking up to him, not a joke, was this is a long shot, <laughs> but fuck it. Because I was drunk and high, and I was just that sparkly confident. Ooh, uh -huh. And I was like, I'm going to do this. Wait, before we get into how you met Please. him, this is the second time I've done this. No, no, I'm sorry. Can you tell me another terrible Tinder oh, story? Oh, yeah. We could go for a while. Um, Yeah, oh, God. There was a, there's been a lot where I just like... Oh, oh my God! Yes, this is the mm -hmm. best one. There was one time on Grinder, I went to go meet a couple. Okay, oh, I think I've you heard know this. Story. this. <laughs> Should I tell you the story? Yes. I went to go meet a couple. They were very nice, and uh -huh. I was like, "Oh, that's a bit much," but like, whatever. It could be fun, and you know, they were very nice. They were like, "Here's mm -hmm. what you can do: you can have a glass of wine. Mm -hmm. If at the end of the glass of wine you don't want to stay." fully welcome to leave and i was like that's classy mm -hmm. and i took him up on it had a i showed up at uh their apartment had a glass of wine you know just like many gay couples they you know had that thing where like they kind of like you know had a look where like they both were like they both were brown and mm -hmm. and and you know, had like similar hair and we're just like little a gay twin couple yes and um so we're hanging out and drinking wine of course one glass of wine is more mm -hmm. and of course that becomes two glasses and mm -hmm. they're flanking me and literally like touching on me and oh, it's like boy. an awesome feeling uh -huh. it's an awesome feeling and so then i noticed so like as they're like touching me at one point like one of their hands grazes the other mm -hmm. the other boyfriend's hand and uh flinches back hard like flinches back hard it's like oh. i was like Okay, maybe this is like a power play. Uh -huh. Maybe they're, I don't know what's going on, but at first I didn't think of much of it, but it happened again. Where one of them grazed the other one's hand mm -hmm. with me in the middle, flinch back. And I had, and I was just like, a bit casually like oh what's happening like just let me know like if if this is the thing where you're not touching each other just like let me know so I can uh -huh. adjust my brain can understand uh -huh. what's going to happen tonight. And they were like, okay, look, um, don't leave, <laughs> which, is <laughs> which is like the best way um, to get someone to leave. I really want to, though. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So um, they were like, we're not boyfriends. We're brothers. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> we're brothers. And um, we just wanted to see what it would be like to hook up with a guy together. And we just wanted to know if you wanted to do this. And of course, I'm drunk uh -huh. as a skunk. And I'm a little freaking out. And I'm like, why did you guys lie to me? What's uh -huh. happening? And they're like, we just, it's just a thing we wanted to try. It's not weird. It's super weird, specifically <laughs> because it's like, <laughs> so you as brothers want to hook up with someone, but mm -hmm. you don't want to touch each other? Mm -hmm. Like, do you just want to watch each other with some? <laughs> It's so it's weird on so many levels because mm -hmm. it's like okay incest strange strange it's strange to want to fuck for a me. sibling. I could never fuck my sister. A it would be boring. No. B it's not good. No, it's not it's good. It's just not good. But I'll admit that like oh god. So ask me if I stayed. Did you? Stay? I stayed. <laughs> Like I stayed because I was drunk. There were two naked guys near them? me. No. Okay. No, no, no. But there was a lot of stuff happening to me, and did they keep flinching, or did they just learn not no, to touch? No, they like leaned in. They uh, there was some more touching, <laughs> but it was. Here's what I'll say: after things ended, mm -hmm. after things had finished, was the quietest. I'm sure longest forty five seconds of my life. I am putting my pants yep. back on. And then having those brothers being like, what have we done? Yeah. Yeah. It was very that. It was very just like, okay. We can't talk uh, about this at Thanksgiving. We have to pretend it's not a thing. And I was like, cool. I get to leave now. Yeah. You, you guys, guys have, to have to be brothers. Deal with this. For a little bit longer. Oh, how weird. I love that you stayed. I'm filth. It's I'm filth. amazing that you stayed. And it was one of those things where it was such a dirty thing that like I didn't need sex for like another... <laughs> 
two weeks, <laughs> that thing where you like. We were just like, that was wild. That was wild. And I need to now mm-hmm. read some bedtime stories. <laughs> like you're just like yeah, excited had, like, to watch Disney movies. Nasty sex where I'm like, I don't. <laughs> he really dug around in my butt. I don't <laughs> think I need anything for a while. No, your Here, butt. Look at my, uh, okay. look at my Tinder. Okay, and, and what do I okay. do? So one, if you're listening to the, well, not if, you are listening to this, but if you want to see what Mono's looking at, you can go to my Facebook page, mm-hmm. it's Nicole Byer backslash comedy or something, or like it's Nicole Byer comedy on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And there is a photo album labeled Tinder and it's got my Tinder and my Bumble. Mm-hmm. So Mono, I just want you to describe what you're seeing. Okay, so I see a gorgeous picture of you. Ah, thank you. With gorgeous curly hair. Yeah. You wearing like a t-shirt that's like a chain chomp. A chain chomp. It looks like a chain chomp from Mario, but it's probably not. Oh, maybe it is. I don't. It's like a monster. It's like a little monster face, mm-hmm. and you are holding one of the biggest dildos I've ever seen. <laughs> um, if this looks like maybe a. F- 16 inch cock mm-hmm. with big balls Yum. and like a crazy width. Yes. A crazy width. It's very big. Um, yeah, it's a pretty gorgeous picture. Thank you. Yeah, do I need to keep describing? No, you can just swipe through and describe what you see. And if if you think that like I should change a picture or mm-hmm. if you think a picture is misleading, you can let me know. Oh, and how do I swipe through your other pictures? Do I go down? I think you just swipe left or right. Okay, now I see it. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now there okay, there's you at Christmas. Mm-hmm. With a gorgeous big Christmas tree. Very big. I love this. You look cute. That's a really nice picture. That's a really nice compliment with the first picture. Okay. Because the first picture, I will admit, is like a little, it, it could be intimidating. Okay. Because it's is it, is it saying, I need this big of a cock. But here's the thing. That that dildo is so big. That, that if you're anyone it's were clearly to look at it. Yes, it has to be a joke. Yeah. If anyone was to look at that and go, oh, boy. <laughs> I don't add up. To that is insane. <laughs> yes. And I've had a couple guys go, well, I'm white, so like I definitely don't have a dick like that. I'm like, mm-hmm. nobody does. If no. they do, they're an elephant or they're not well. Right. They're sick. Uh, it's a part of a problem. It's not a good thing for them. <laughs> yes. Um, and it for sure. Sh- okay. Yeah. Okay. So cute Christmas tree. Mm-hmm. Really great follow up. Because then that, that reinforces that you're like, you're delightful. I just like big things. <laughs> you just like big things. Unless someone sees the tree. And they're like, I don't have a tree like that. <laughs> My oh, tree is much she can, smaller. She can never come to Christmas at my house. <laughs> my dad's dick is way <laughs> smaller. <laughs> okay. Okay. So then there's a gorgeous picture of you in sort of a trailer. Yes. Um, business, the business. Yes. No, but you just look gorgeous. But only other actors realize it's a trailer. That's true. It's That's really true. funny. It just looks like a cute little apartment room or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, you look beautiful. Very. This is a very gorgeous and not like tawdry look. Thank you. You could be tawdry if you wanted to, though. Tawdry. This is a good word. What does it mean? <gasps> like you know, like um, sexy. Sexy. Ooh, tawdry. Wow. There's a stunning picture of now you in a bodysuit. Yeah. And your ass is featured. Yes. Let them know. Let them see. Let them know. Your ass is bringing it to the runway. Yes. Runway. Yes. Run. Bitch. Run. Yes, run. Yes, 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 run. Yes. 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 Gorgeous. I like Don't that bodysuit. Don't be jealous of my booty. Don't be jealous of my booty. <laughs> you can say that you're not. Okay. And uh, now a gorgeous <laughs> picture of you in a heart. Oh, it's like a fun little... This is fun. You're being fun. You're making a goofy face. You're saying, I'm beautiful, but I don't have to look beautiful all the time. Oh, thank you. You do look beautiful. Oh, and then you and dog, Charlie Todd. No, that's Clyde. Clyde, I mix them up. It's um, fine. I got cute two of them. dog. Nice. Okay. Those are all of you them. You think they're good? I think they're really good. Okay. I I really think this is awesome. I think because I think it's a good representation of how playful you are. It says I'm sexy. I'm not afraid to be sexy. Mm-hmm. But it also says I have a sense of humor. And also I just like having, like celebrating simple joy is like a fucking Christmas tree. <laughs> you know? You know me. I'll scream for less. <laughs> I'll see a penny on the floor and be like, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a penny richer. <laughs> And the first line is, I got a fat ass, so if you're not into it, bye. I love this. Oh, thank you. Down to figure skate. Okay, yeah, this is really good. I mean, yeah, this is awesome. One of your interests is your TV show. (laughs) I don't know how to change it. (laughs) 
Don't change it. Don't I, change it. I mean, if you're not interested in it, who who yeah, would be? Who would be? Gotta, I mean, gotta be interested in you it. Gotta, you gotta love love what you're given. I'm trying. I love this. Is there a, now? So so, what is your question? Is this a good representation? Yes. Do you think it's a good representation of me? Do you think I should change anything? Do you? Yeah. What do you? What are your overall thoughts? I have to say, at very first, my gut was like, oh, should this be the first picture? Okay. That's what my gut said. But then I saw the collection. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It was like after, at first I was like, that's a weird smock to start with. <laughs> but then once I saw that there was a culotte that matched it, mm-hmm. and then there was a fun print with the same, like a bolero jacket with the same print. <laughs> As the culotte this and the smock. This you are creating is <laughs> everything. <laughs> so to me, it's a smocked baby doll. I'm wearing mm-hmm. culottes and I'm wearing a bolero. Mm-hmm. Is there a hat? You know there's a hat. It's a it's a tiny fedora. I love it so much. Um, yeah, so as together, the whole collection mm-hmm. is pretty sickening. Okay, thank you. Um, Shantae. Shantae, I stay. Shantae, you stay. No, I really, I love it. I mean, I love you. This says you're fun, and it shows how, it shows you're, like, not afraid to be confident and fun and sexy. Thank you. You're such a fucking catch. Oh. What do you think right now is something you're, like, looking for, something you're not looking for? Well, I think Like, are you I'm... looking for a friend or a lover? I, I keep going back and forth with mm-hmm. it. I think I want a boyfriend, but then I'm like, oh, maybe I just want a lover? Mm-hmm. But then I'm like, maybe I want a boyfriend lover? And I was like, what yeah. does that even fucking mean? I think what I would like is, I think it's nice that, like, a boyfriend would mean I have someone to always hang out with. Mm-hmm. Like, if he's not free, he's not free, but for the most part, he's free because he wants to be with me. Yeah. It would be nice to not have to be like, oh, all right, it's Friday. I guess I, like, call people, or maybe I just sleep because I'm tired. I don't mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, like, that would be nice. And then eventually I would like to, like, share my life with someone. Yeah. Um, I mean, I just, like, I just moved into a house where it's very specifically me. Yeah. And it were like I don't. House. I would hate to like have to like get rid of it to like move into something that's like more his speed. No. So it's like it's a. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I'm like ready to adjust my life for a relationship. No, you shouldn't have to be, because you need someone who's just as self sufficient as you are. Yes. Because you don't need to be picking anyone up, and vice versa. You don't need anyone picking you up. Yeah. No, that would feel awful. No, you don't want that. You need to both have your lives, and then you enjoy the moments where you get mm-hmm. to bring them together. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Mano, let me ask you a question. Please. Oh, would you ever date me? <gasps> yes. You would? I know. I'm sorry. I'm so fucking gay. <laughs> I'm ridiculous. Okay, so yeah. if you weren't gay, uh, or if I was a man, would you date me? Yes. You would? Yes. Okay. I, I think... You... It's funny because even Nicole a couple years ago was like... I, I was like, I used to think you were so wild. <laughs> <laughs> I was. You I were. Was pretty wild. It was. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, so a couple years ago, I would be like, I don't know. That Nicole is fast. <laughs> that Nicole is pretty fast. I don't know if I can. But today, uh, Nicole, yeah, I feel like, yeah, you're such, like, you've, like, come into your own, like, not, and not like I'm, I'm an you. adult. Uh, I'm so not an adult. But, like, you've just, like, you've. You're like steadily adulting at such a nice rate. I feel rate. like we've all grown so much. Yeah, yeah. I think it's nice, and I think that's a nice thing to notice. Because mm-hmm. I have been trying to be responsible and not yeah. not be as, I mean, not not be as slutty, but like to just like make better choices with men mm-hmm. and like understand that like you don't have to fuck dudes if you don't like them and you don't have to stay out all night and you can just go home yeah so i'm just like it's like a whole learning experience and i feel like all of our friends are kind of like yeah like booing up and like settling down and like not being cray cray yeah which is like nice get over it can i ask you a maybe personal question absolutely so you know i'm a person who identifies as like having body dysmorphia sure yes and and you know if nothing else i'm just like very aware of body image stuff and Mm -hmm. it's gotten so much better in in just recent years and honestly it's gotten better Having a boyfriend, I can express that too. Like mm-hmm. this is the first boyfriend I've had who have, I can been like, I can just be like, I have body dysmorphia, <laughs> and he's like, I get that. 
Mm-hmm. And it's just like, oh, wow, like the pressure is like gone. Gone. Do you consider yourself someone who struggles with body image or is fully over it? I used to have a lot of body image issues. Mm-hmm. Especially like growing up, I was always fatter than everybody, Mm -hmm. browner than everybody. Mm -hmm. My hair wouldn't grow as long as everybody else's. Mm -hmm. So growing up, I would like harbor things. But in, I would say, I don't know, like when I got to college, I very much like didn't give very many fucks, but I still had hangups. Like I wouldn't wear sleeveless things. I was like, God forbid someone saw my whole arm, which to me today is the most insane thought I've ever had (laughs) because arms are arms, bodies are bodies. And I would say like in the last two, three years, I've been like, fuck it. Who cares? I don't care. I'm gonna wear whatever I want. Yeah. I'm gonna show that body, yadi yadi. Oh, I don't yes. care anymore. But in the same Start breath, like, on that if I choose to lose weight, then that's a choice I've made. Yeah, and it has nothing nothing to do with outside influences. Yeah, like I've become very happy with this body. Yeah, that if you don't like it, then like honestly, whatever. Yeah, and then it's like if people have rude things to say about it, then like. That means I'm fucking powerful. That yeah. means this body is so that. grotesque and so upsetting <laughs> that they had to stop their life to go, I gotta tell her! Because <laughs> it's you, like. <laughs> I've heard you talk about this before, and I love how you. Yeah. You say, I have. I controlled your yes, day. Yes, yeah. I fucked your day up so much just by living <laughs> yeah. that you had to say something to me or you had to just stare at me. Uh-huh. And I feel like more people should just say to like, if you're differently abled or you like look different than the norm, that if someone stares at you, you should just whisper, you like what you see and like wink <laughs> because that throws people <laughs> off and they can go, no, I don't. And then you go, then why are you looking? Because you look like a fucking freak and you can't stop thinking about it. Like, it, and it's true. It's and it's true. not like me being like, here's a snappy comeback for you. Mm-hmm. It's like, you're literally just spitting the truth back at them. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I would say, if you talked to me five years ago, I would go, oh, I probably have to lose some weight before I find love. Yeah. But me today, I'm like, no, you'll love me like this or you don't love me at all. That's yeah. it. That's fine. It's fine. Not everyone's, not everyone's going to love this package that they'd be open. Sure. But, but the person you deserve will. is already into it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait. So I said we would talk about how you met your okay. boyfriend okay. later. It's now Later. later. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen and ladies. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We've come to the portion. We've come to the portion of the show where oh. Mano will talk about a bad night at a gay bar <laughs> on the east side of L.A. Woo! Which is the better part of L.A. to be gay, yeah, frankly. I think so. But um, I was at Akbar. Okay, the bad night. I was at Akbar. Mm-hmm. And um, I was, you know, whatever, hanging out, being a slut. And um, <laughs> someone, and this is fully, it's so stupid. Cause it's like, this goes back to like my bad body tendencies. Mm-hmm. Cause like, so when someone would praise me for just my body, I'm like, oh, you have my attention. Mm-hmm. A guy slid his hand down my pants. Front or back? Back. Okay. And squeezed my ass, my bare ass. And I immediately was like, hello, boyfriend. Mm-hmm. I was just like, you deserve my attention. And he was just being super flirty and he was like, hey, blah, 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 like we're talking. And I was like, let me get you a drink. Mm -hmm. I go to get a drink from the bar, bring him back a drink. He's already talking to another gentleman. And I was like, oh, cool. Mm -hmm. I give him the drink. It's immediately weird. I immediately feel like a weird little sister Mm -hmm. when you're like, "Uh uh-oh, the energy's changed, Uh something happened. So I literally try to leave. I'm like, okay, um, enjoy your drink. I'll see you around the bar. And he's like, wait, where are you going? And I was like, oh, I was just gonna Mm -hmm. walk, I'm like trying to give him. I'm just gonna walk away and let you talk to this dude that you're now talking to. Yeah, don't leave, I don't wanna stay here being like the weird third third wheel. wheel. Ugh. And he's like, no, it's not like that. We used to live together. It is not like that. And I'm mm-hmm. like, okay. So I stay because I don't want to be rude. And I'm still the weird little sister, third mm-hmm. wheel, hanging out between them who are actually flirting. <laughs> and I uh, keep talking. We keep hanging out. I guess it gets a little better. And I finally was like, well, it was like getting late in the night. And so I was like, you know, maybe today is not the day I get to know Mm -hmm. him. But maybe I'll ask for his number and get to know him in a different, like just like a more appropriate 
get to know someone situation. And so I asked him, I was like, hey, like, can I get your number? And he says to me, no. <gasps> and I'm already shaken to my core. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And he's like, I just don't see it happening. It's not, it's nothing, it's nothing between me and him. It's just, I just don't see it happening. <laughs> it's you. I was like, oh. okay. And he was like, but I, I got to get out of here anyways. So um, I got to run. I'm sorry. I I'll see you around soon. And I was like, okay. And that was already hard enough. Mm -hmm. But then like 10 or 15 minutes later, mm -hmm. I see him making out with, with the guy, guy who he said it wasn't a thing with, Ugh. which is totally his prerogative. He's allowed to do that, yes. but it fucked me up. Well, him, he, maybe he thought he was like, well, no, I think he was trying to keep his options open yes. by keeping you around. Yes. And then when he was like, oh, there's nothing with this guy, he like didn't want to hurt your feelings. Right. He was being super selfish. If I were him, I would have been like, oh, sorry, when you went to buy me a drink like a nice gentleman, I was an asshole and I started talking to this other guy that I'm more interested in. Yeah. Sorry. I know. It's a fucking battlefield out yeah, there. Yeah, people are like assholes and they're just so shitty. Yeah, and because there isn't gender norms, there's no like, you can't speak this way to a woman. No. No. It's just like, we're all men, we're uh -huh. all pigs, uh, <laughs> find your slop, because I'm going to get mine. Wait, and then your boyfriend, when did that come Okay, in? so that was a bad night. I literally went to Garage Pizza, uh -huh. uh, ordered all the pizza in the world. Mm -hmm. My Our dear, wonderful friend, Drew Tarver, like l literally and figuratively scooped me up off oh, the sidewalk. He's the best. He's awesome. And was like, you're going to be fine. Don't be, calm mm -hmm. down. And but the next, I went back the next night because I have such a deep seated fear of becoming an old bitter mm, queen, queen. <laughs> who's just like has grinder on his phone and has, has accepted there's no such mm -hmm. thing as meaningful relationships and just invites fuck boys over <laughs> to pump his hole. Uh huh. Um, I was just like, that's a fear of mine. So I was like, I'm gonna go back to the scene of the crime mm -hmm. and shake off that bad memory. And I hung out for a long time. I got drunk. I got high. Mm -hmm. And after the bar closed at like 2.05 a.m. Uh, at a time commonly referred to as sidewalk sale. <laughs> <laughs> when all the gay men yes, are on. just on the sidewalk. You're uh -huh. like, I guess I'm, this is it. And like, I'll guys, bring one I'm of these sale. people home. Guys, that is I, incredible. I've I, never heard that before. I am severely discounted right now. <laughs> um, all mono must go. <laughs> um, and I just happened upon Gene and walked up to him, thought the thought, this is a long shot, mm -hmm. but fuck it. It's 2.05 a.m. Started talking to him, hung out for a second weirdly kissed like at that like little kitchen uh -huh. corner yeah. where the kitchen is um and then just that was it did you hook up that night uh yeah and you've been fun fact ever since i know fun fact i tried to go home uh -huh. and he was like pu pushed me to come home with him oh and I love rubbing that in his face. <laughs> you did this. You made this happen. You did this. Ha you did this. Oh, um, I love it. Yeah, it's been really I will awesome. say, it might be, I feel like it's like a little easier to be at a gay bar to pick up somebody than mm -hmm. it is like just a, a bar. There's more like f uh, eyes on the prize. Yes. Yeah. And I, I don't know if I've ever been to like a traditionally straight bar or mm -hmm. whatever where I'm like, I walk in and I'm like, there's men here who are looking. I, it's hard. I don't, I don't know when men are looking for women. Yeah. I don't understand. I don't, I can't read signs. It's all very confusing to me. Yeah. Uh, but also like, I don't go to bars anymore. Yeah. If I'm in a bar, it's because I'm doing a show. Yeah. I don't make a point to like go out to it. Or I'm at fucking Birds. Yeah. I'm not gonna find love at Birds. No. Or Franklin and Company or Pooh no. Bell. Do you, is it, God, this is too deep of a question, but like, Please. do you see yourself dating a person of color? Any um, person? For a very long time, I did not want to date black men uh -huh. because my experience with black men had been them questioning my blackness mm -hmm. like them being like do you speak the way you speak because you think you're better than me oh you're just an oreo like i was called an oreo by a pretty well-known black comic 
uh, during a like round table show mm -hmm. where we were talking about dating mm -hmm. and he I said something about how I love Patrick Swayze because if Patrick if Patrick Swayze is my ultimate man I know he's dead <laughs> but like I love him he that is what I want that was face that so body snatched. everything so snatched just so sexy all sinew and muscle he seemed like a good and, guy like uh, I just loved just him a, he had a pretty dick I yes. bet yes and I think it's specifically Patrick Swayze was the person that I was like this is for me is that scene in Ghost <laughs> mm -hmm. where uh, Whoopi allows Demi to be in his body and at the end or no in the beginning you see like oh wait maybe that's Demi's hands I don't <laughs> fucking know uh -oh. whatever you're those, gay those black hands and white hands <laughs> and I guess uh, I'm uh, I'm remembering it wrong whatever I, I just love Patrick Swayze so I was talking about that and he's like oh you're just an Oreo and I was like excuse me he's like yeah you're black on the outside but you're definitely white on the inside mm -hmm. and I was like and I just was quiet because I didn't, I was like, this is just, it's going to keep happening. It's going to happen for the rest yeah. of my life. Also, I was wearing a jacket that was too small. So, like, my arms <laughs> were kind of raised. Yes. And I was like, I'm uncomfortable on literally every level you can be uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm in front of a studio audience, there's cameras on me, a man's calling me an Oreo, this jacket doesn't fit, if I lower my arms, it's gonna snap, and then I'm not um. a fat Oreo, I'm double stuffed, like, <laughs> the whiteness is trying to explode out of me, it was, and it just, like, kept happening, so I was like, I guess I don't want to date black men, because I don't, I don't want my, I don't want my blackness to be questioned, because I'm black, and I can't rub it off, so you questioning it makes it, it just hurts even more. Yeah. It's like, aren't we in this together? Like, why do you have to make comments like that? Right. And it got to a point where I was like, I'd rather a dude be, call me exotic than question my blackness. Yeah. Like, whether a white guy be like, man, you're so exotic. Can I touch your hair? Oh, it was just boy. like easier to go like, fine, great, great. This never happens again, as opposed mm -hmm. to like someone who's going to keep bringing it up. Because mm -hmm. I dated a black guy for a little bit who he would always bring it up. He was from like Brooklyn. He was from bed born and raised. He was like, and we just were from different different worlds and mm -hmm. he would just say things where i was just like fuck man this makes me feel bad yeah i don't want to be with you because i'm just I, i'm afraid you're gonna hurt my feelings yeah and i was with this dude on and off you know him he's a bad egg but he would always comment on my body mm. he like he'd be like i love your body your body feels good this is great and i'd be like oh these positive affirmations right feel so good uh and this was like four years ago at this point where I was still trying to accept my body and mm -hmm. who I am. Mm -hmm. And it was just like him being like, I love it. I'd be like, well, he loves it. So right. I guess it's okay. Right. So that's like to go back to your yeah. body. Yeah. Talk earlier. Totally. And you're like, well, if this is validation, yeah, then this, then is, what this is what I deserve. Yeah. And even though outside of the bedroom, he was a piece of shit. Sure. And not nice. It was like, but like in those moments. Yeah. He said he loved my fat little ass. And yeah. He like uh, loved my rolls. <laughs> oh, he called me his little sweet fat. He said I was a sweet little fatty and he couldn't <laughs> get enough of it. And then he got, <laughs> put some kibble in his hand and I fucking ate it out of it. <laughs> I mean, honestly, five years ago, if a dude said he loved my body, he could feed me dog. <laughs> I um, well, I'm very proud of you for just like living it, understanding it, growing from it. Thank and you. I wonder, I could see it going so many ways. You could date someone who is white and accepts that they don't get it. I would love that. You know I what I mean? Love, because I don't get it. Because I've dated dudes uh -huh. who I have said things where they're like, no, you're wrong. Yeah. And I'm like, well, don't tell me I'm wrong about my experience. This is, right. it's literally my thoughts mm -hmm. on it. And I've dated dudes who are like, eh, I don't really want to talk about it. And I'm like, yeah. okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. But I would love to date a dude who's just like, wow, uh, sure, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Like, great. Well, you can get different parts of it. Like, my boyfriend is also A's Asian, so we both have fun yelling about bad white people. <laughs> but we have different experiences with it. We also have different experiences with, like, venues in which we get to pass, yeah. venues in which we don't get to pass, because that's a reality for uh, some people, too. Being yeah. like, yeah. For me, I feel like in white room or the white world, I'm like, definitely, you're black. You're yeah. black. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, you're black. <laughs> but yeah. then when I like go with black people, they're like, "Ugh, you're different. You're not black uh -huh. enough." And I'm like, "But where do I <laughs> belong?" <laughs> it's it's um, very weird. It's very weird. You don't have to fit anywhere. 
Yeah, man. Be your own kind of weird. In my own little box. Yeah. Wow. Well, we've really, really talked, and we could talk for forever. I could but, talk to you forever. But we gotta wrap this up. Oh shit. Is there anything you want to plug? Um, you can just find me online yes. at Mono Agapian. Yes. You can listen to my podcast that I do with. Horny for horror. Woo! Uh, we gotta have you on with um, Betsy, Betsy, Betsy and, Sodaro, and, and Adam, Adam McCabe, McCabe. Yes, who are two very funny people. They're really sweet and you awesome. You gotta listen to that podcast. Would you come on and do it? I would absolutely love to. We'll we'll talk about what you're gonna talk about. It could even be <laughs> we'll we'll figure out what is what scary thing you want to talk about. But we can't wait to have you on. Okay, what a treat. Also, Mono performs at UCB Franklin mm-hmm. every Friday night mm-hmm. uh, with his team called Winslow. It is yeah. at 9.30. Yeah, girl, you're better at plugging and- <laughs> me than y- you than me. Well, because I want people to see you because I you know. are so fucking funny. You're so genuine. You. You're so real. I love playing with you. I think you're such a beautiful, wonderful person. Aww. And the world needs to see you. And the world. Um, Thank you. I love you. Thank I love you. that we get to have these powwows. I love right? that. Because it's not often that we get like these safe spaces to no. kind of like, Oh, to just say things talk that... about things yeah and i love that you talk about your body dysmorphia because i feel like men do not talk about i know the pressures that they have it's usually like women get told this it's like well have you ever picked up a men's health yeah have you oh. ever, like have you ever picked up a like a gq <sighs> like Shit. these men are all ripped and whatever oh Insane. anyway if you liked what you were listening <laughs> to please subscribe to this podcast and rate it five stars on iTunes or wherever you can listen to podcasts. And if you comment something where you're hitting on me Hmm. in the comments, I will read it when I record my podcast. If you say something like, I would love to sink my dick into your hole. Uh, That's great. (laughs) You're going to find, you're going to find a gym. If you say, I'll take out my dentures and gum your pussy to death. (laughs) (laughs) To death. It's a <laughs> lot of nine. <laughs> Usually I read nine, ones, nine. but I haven't gotten any good ones. They're oh. all like just sit on my face or whatever. Uh-huh. And it's just like, be creative. Show be creative, you pervert. Yeah, you dummy. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. That was a HeadGum Podcast.